Big checks, big sacks of fish, big time bass fishermen. They all have one thing in common, fishing at the highest level. The right cast, the right bait, the right spot, making the right move. Welcome to Lost Lake, where the world's most efficient anglers, the top pros on the FLW and Bassmaster Elite Series tours are given one day to figure things out on a lake they are unfamiliar with. It's no holds barred dissection, and unless they want to come up empty, all of their tricks and secrets will be on display. He may be the clown prince of bass fishing. It's like whoa, like Menendez you're fishing with. So be ready. But when he's in the boat, Gerald Swindle is all business. The G-Man secured his place in angling history with an early career FLW Tour win and backed it up with a Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. Laughing? Sure. All the way to the bank. Today he's hitting a lost lake in the springtime. The big girls should be spawning now and no one can sweet talk them like the G-Man. Welcome to Lost Lake. Today you'll be hanging with me all day. We're down here where everything's beautiful. You see the leaves turning in the springtime. We got good wind today. It's gonna be a little strong at times. I think we can fight through it, but I'm gonna try to help you break down the lake. What that means is I'm gonna try to speed up the process of you catching more fish. I'm gonna show you the way I would do it if I was practicing for an elite series or just out fishing and trying to find a big group of fish. We're gonna look for fish moving into pockets, moving out of the creek channels and moving up. It is time to spawn, it's time to catch them. Thanks for joining us on Lost Lakes. I got work to do. The Southern Reservoir has just about everything a bass angler could want, most notably prime staging points and spawning flats that provide super highways for springtime bass with just one thing on their mind. The lake has a few major creeks where the majority of the spawning flats are located. I'm thinking that I'm gambling on the fish moving up. I really do. I come in over these flat pockets. You see what I'm looking at from this view. I'm thinking the river's right behind us. There's some good little ditches leading in here. I'm gonna look for some shallow brush, rock, whatever the fish can get on when the water's down and get in here and try to spawn them. I'm in the water temp, uh, you know, low 60s in the morning. There's gotta be fish up spawning. They gotta be up in the dirt, which is, that's why I'm gonna look for them at. So I'm gambling on them being here. I mean, I, I may have to run three or four pockets to find them, and I may find them in the middle of one in a ditch. I may find them on the little points coming in, and I may find them on a point in the back, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start breaking that down as fast as I can. Usually when you find these fish in these kind of places, it's a bunch of them. They've all moved in together, so. The only thing the G-Man does faster than he talks is fish. He started off with hard baits, a mixture of lipped and lipless crankbaits that allow him to cover water. He could slow down with a springtime staple like a lizard, and he may do so later in the day. But right now, it's all about finding a concentration of fish. There's one right here. That is a giant for Dave Wolak. Coming out of the box, Swindle feeds one off to Wolak. <laughs> oh. Hey, everybody's gotta have a start. Sometimes you gotta bunt one back to the pitcher, okay? I'm bunting one back to the pitcher. If that shows up, flattening your tires. <laughs> but yeah. You know, I have, I have seen situations like this lake today uh, in my 12 or 13 years of professional fishing. You know, yeah, there's been a Pickwick, there's been a Clark Hill where you have a lot of cover that's dry, a lot of shorelines are tapering. They have some of the similarities, so I could dig back in the archives and remember what I'd done and, and seeing the temperature change. So there's been a little bit, but not a lot that, are, that serve up just like this. Most lakes, that, that have this much cover out of the water have seem to be more drops right out in front of them, so this was kind of different. There's one right here. This was way out. He's little, but he was way out a lot further than I thought he should be. But every fish is a sign, so let's see if we can. There should be a bunch of them right there. That, when I say a depression or a dog leg, you hear make reference to that, something dipping in. 
it shows at the bottom on my on my Lorraine sheet here, it shows that the, the bottom comes in and it makes a little dip right here. A little, kind of like a horseshoe, and it shows that to be deeper than it really is. I went from sitting in three to now my boat's in five just that quick, but it goes straight to that point. Common sense says even if the water's moving up or falling out, that that should be an area that a lot of fish just sit, waiting for everything to stabilize. And I just can't help but believe there's got to be more fish there than just that one, huh? The small bass have made themselves known, but they're not the ones Gerald's looking for. So he keeps on chunking and winding his way around this bay. Big fish are like my ex-girlfriend. Real moody. You can quote me on that. <laughs> but there's a method to his speed reeling. He's scientifically breaking down the area. Are they in the pocket itself or on the point says its margins? Once he can narrow things down, he can replicate that strategy elsewhere, even on a small lake. Fish, been fishing a few minutes. I went around this entire pocket. I just picked one coming down the lake and ran it. I had a couple little bitty bites, really found nothing that interested me. I fished a couple of ditches, nothing happened. Not saying that the fish ain't here for me to, to kind of, I guess, put a little bit more effort into this pattern because I think this is where the bay I need to fish more pockets. So you can pick, you know, it's nothing saying you can't pick one pocket that really doesn't have them in it. So maybe I pick one that there's not a lot of fish in. Uh, I'm not going to change baits that much. I'm going to stay shallow, but I am going to move down the lake a little bit, uh, move up in another area. You can hear the wind picking up and just start trying to do it again. I'll, I will find them in there. They cannot hide. You know, we started out the day in the back of the pockets and, and, and fishing pretty shallow, and we had to spend some time on that, kind of connecting the dots. I checked point A, point B, point C, and I worked my way all the way around the pocket. I mean, and I get toward the mouth and I can see the shad start flipping around. Everything starts getting real active. But it took me 900 yards or 1,000 yards of fishing to get to that area where I started seeing things happen that automatically started catching them. So you, you've got to fish it all. You've got to do the whole circle, in, you know, to be successful. The first creek didn't produce his hope, so Swindle's on the move to another cove. But instead of heading all the way back, he stops on a windblown point that should harbor fish that have not yet committed to the mating dance. It's a spot like this where a tournament angler can get healthy in a hurry. I hit it right there. That was fish right there. One guy, no. Yep, look here, I got, I got two. I got two and look at the group, look at the group. Look at the fish. Now I had two of them at one time. Good Lord, and there was a group of them with them. That's a little better right there. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, at one time I had two fish on at the same time. And when I got this fish in, that's not bad. I mean, it's a start. If you turn them at fishing, you gotta get, you gotta get somewhere and get yourself a start. That's a keeper, you know. All right, we'll see if I can repeat that. And a lot, the key to this, and always remember in the spring, when you get bit like that, is there may be a group of them in a small section. So what you want to try to do is repeat that exact same cast, boat positioning, everything. So you see me immediately get on the trolling motor. There's another one right there. I start trolling out, I got another one. It's not a big one, but see I troll out, I'm headed, I try to keep the nose of the boat in the wind. So what I found now is you're hunting a sweet spot. If you think the wind ain't blowing, I'm flying that little fella like a kite. Today, the wind was absolutely howling. This morning, it was a constant battle for boat positioning to make the cast, trying to throw in it. Uh, if I would have let that get to me, it could be extremely aggravating and almost push me off fish. So the wind actually helped me catch them cranking, but it was most definitely a lot harder to cast and work into. But, you know, be patient with the wind. There's nothing you can do about it, so don't stress it. Try to get where you can use it to your advantage, whether it's throwing back boat position where you can throw into the wind or get out of the wind, look for sight fish or whatever. But just kind of, you know, don't let it control your whole day. And so many anglers let the wind dictate their day in a bad way. There's one right there. That's that limitless. A little bit better, a little bit better right there. Now all I've done now is swapped to a lipless crankbait, fired it right back in there, and it's kind of yo-yoing. The whole time I'm reeling him in, I'm trolling out. That's a little better. I'd... 
Alright. Oh, oh, easy, 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 easy. Oh, it's in my finger. Hey, it's a start. Gerald's number strategy has paid off. The fish are absolutely stacked on this point, willing to chomp on just about anything he throws their way. I didn't miss that one. That's a better one too. Uh-huh. Now see, that was weird, man. I just cranked and I've cranked and I've cranked and I've cranked and I've cranked. And I was thinking, you know what, I'm on Texas Rig Lizard. That's a little better fish. And that's just a regular old Texas Rig Lizard. That's a zoom eight inch. And it's weird that fish has been sitting there and he's been letting me crank all over him. And I throw the lizard twice and I've had two bites. So I just got a feeling I'm not gonna hang around long with him because I'm fixing to catch another one. There's nothing wrong with catching numbers, but they don't necessarily win tournaments. Never satisfied with second place, Swindle wants to take what he's learned here and apply it to his knowledge base. I got me a little and of a little old tree on my swimming flute. I just think there's gotta be some big ones up shallow. I'm gonna do it for a minute. I don't care if it makes every fish in the lake mad. It's only as good as your investigation. And I'm gonna keep investigating. I might find 11 pounder back here on bed. I'm kinda changing up, it's around noon, and, and I had a couple bites this morning up shallow on a swimming fluke, just like a little swim bait up real shallow. And I've caught some on these points and found one group of them, but I'm really wanting to spend a little bit more time researching that shallow bite I had this morning. So it's noon, the sun's up. It should help me if there's any fish, if, you know, if the wind ain't too bad, if I, I could see, I may try to find a big one bedding and just to see, you know, you, you pull in there and see four or five big ones bedding and well, it explains to you why you're not catching any out on them points. So I'm gonna research a little bit more of this shallow bite just to be open-minded. I'm just coming right into the back of a big, big, looks like a spawning flat or a spawning creek. A lot of bushes, and you can tell a lot of fish probably be back here, but it's flat back here. But they gotta be somewhere. So now all I'm doing is just easing down this 1.3 foot of water, throwing it every little dark place I see on the bottom. There's a big one right there, son. Good God, what a fish. Holy moly, what a bass. Whoa! <laughs> Holy moly, what a fish. Oh, hold him, Cletus. Hold him, Cletus. <laughs> Oh, God, what a bass. Oh, it's awesome, dude. Look at the size of this fish. I hadn't retied in like a week. Oh, I ain't retied. Come on, hold him vicious. Hold him vicious. Hold him vicious. <laughs> what do you think, dog? You got to tighter up, son. That's a toad, son. That is a freaking toad. Yes. I don't care. I mean, I know. Oh Lord, I gotta sit down. I know what you think. You watch TV and you think, them guys are out there, Swindle, Ike and Ellie, that whole bunch, they're just a bunch of idiots. They get too fired up. It's my life, dude. That's what I live for right there. Some guys live to kill a giant buck. Some guys, they have a different, they wanna jump off a mountain for the adrenaline. It's what the G-Man rolls for right here, baby. A fish like that, that's a fish of a lifetime. And that's what it's all about on Lost Lakes. You keep plugging away, man. You keep plugging away. You keep your mind rolling, keep your heart in it, keep your rod down, just keep looking. Moved into two foot of water and cracked an absolute giant. Oh, yes. Whew. Let me get some water on her. He's 
true outdoorsman, you want to let them go, I want you to look at the size of that fish. It's beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's let her go. Let her have it. Spawn it on out. Whew. That's the thing. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's a hundred grand on the line, uh, a two hundred dollar fruit jar termer. Or we're just out here shooting lost lakes for you guys. That's what it's all about to me. That's what drives me every day to get up and do it again and again and again. So I'm glad y'all got to share that with me. It was awesome, dude. That one right there. That's what it's all about. Next time I'm sitting around grilling with my buddies, I'm gonna be like, let me tell you about that one I caught on Lost Lake out of that brush pile. Two foot of water, Texas rig lizard. And the only reason we're back here is this morning, and you'll look back on the show, I had a couple of shallow bites on a, on a swimming fluke, and we found some fish that was really stacked up out, and I said, let's just go in and research a little bit more shallow to make sure we didn't overlook something because we was catching too many little ones. I've had three bites and brush piles. That's the first one I've hooked and it's a big one. So. And look behind me. I've got a lot more of them to fish. Let's go get them. Holy moly. I think I'm going to break down and retie. <laughs>For all of his hard work, the G-Man has cashed in by slowing down. Rising temperatures aren't hurting. They never do at this time of year. And by stockpiling subtle hints and sticking to his guns, he waited out the fish of a lifetime. But as stated previously, professional anglers are rarely satisfied. Where there's one spawning giant, there have to be more, right? Gerald heads farther back into the creek to look for some fish that are early to bed. Sight fishing is almost like deer hunting. Yeah, he squirted. I'm not there acts like I can Ellie. You ain't gonna catch him. He hit some water and he, he ran to grandma's house. The bass spawn is one of the most intriguing times to fish in the yearly cycle of bass fishing. With a flick of the switch, bass can be in, up on the beds. Water temperature and moon phase seem to be the most important two factors for spawning bass. While not all bass spawn at one time, you can almost bet when there is a full moon in April, in the south, a wave of fish will be ready to make their beds. Typically, the males are the first to the shallows, followed soon by the females. Right, there's a spin right there. It's an old quarter turn. That ain't what I wanted. I want a full spin. Yeah, there she is. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That ain't bad. Oh, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I like me some sight fishing. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's a good fish. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with it. I mean, you get back here and catch you a limb of a limb, son, you'd be doing pretty good. But, you know, sight fishing is such a visual deal. You're, you're constantly having to make a great cast. Let me go and I, you know, when you're sight fishing, I seen that fish and I, and I put the pro pole down, I stopped the boat, I do all that. So he's between two limbs, I'm having to make this, the, the, the repetition of the cast, the cast, the cast. What I'm doing is watching that fish spin around and around and around and around and around. Finally, I hopped it, he caught it in midair. To me, the, the biggest adrenaline rush as an outdoorsman, bow hunting and sight fishing, that's awesome. Uh, just remember when you're sight fishing, catch them, release them real quick, let them get back in the water and do their thing, but that was <laughs> awesome. Might not be that fun for you, fam, but it's a lot of fun for me catching. So let's keep it up, man. That's a pretty good little deal. You know, my day on the water today, is, if it was a, a practice day for me, I wasn't calling it a great success, but it was a success to a certain point that if I'd been in a tournament, I could survive. You know, you're looking for keys in that. Yeah, maybe you didn't break down the lake, maybe you didn't do all this, but what, what did you do right, Gerald? What do you think was some of the keys? Confidence, confidence, confidence. The ability to keep moving, believing in what I'm doing and paying attention to the little things, the subtle things. Had I not had a couple of small fish bite a uh, fluke around the bank this morning, I would have never come back in shallow again. So even though I didn't really catch them and it didn't really stand out right then, it was a piece of material that I wrote down in my notes in my mind and I said, there's fish there. One thing is for certain on this lost lake, the fish are biting from shallow points to deep points, all the way to the skinniest water in the back of a creek, there are fish to be found. When an angler arrives at a lake with conditions like this, they set themselves up for a productive day with multiple patterns when they are willing to explore all their options and pay attention to subtle details. I see a big one on bed right there, see? 
Set, set fish on that point. All right, we're gonna take our time and catch him. He's on my lizard right now. He got it. Yep, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Woo. No, he's barely hooked. <laughs> Woo! Lost lakes, baby. Who's lost now? Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Man, oh man. It doesn't get any better, boss. Woo! <laughs> That's a good fish. That makes the second big fish I've caught doing that. You know, we've just, I mean, it's it's closing down. We're, it's, uh, it's fading down. The day's about over. Folks, that's a great one. That's, that's what we're looking for. It's two big ones. Y'all seen two different patterns here on Lost Lake today. You've seen it deep and shallow right here in the spring. Man, what a way to end the day. I'm about out of time. That would normally be about a nine hour practice day for me. We busted it pretty hard and we've had some pretty good results. So let's turn this fish back. Put some water on him. It's a nice one. Well, say thanks for hanging out with me today. You've seen how I do it on the Elite Series. That's how I break a lake down. It's as simple as staying persistent and be open-minded. I'm back shallow simply because I had a couple of bites this morning on a fluke that didn't take the bait. I found a couple of schools deep. Man, it was fun. I'm like a kid. When I'm catching them, I want to keep catching them. We come back shallow and I caught two big ones. So, Man, thanks for hanging out with me. Peace out. I'll see y'all on the Bassmasters Elite Series. Right now, I'm headed home.